That's what I'm talking about right there. It, it's practically falling apart. You might have heard that cooking brisket is difficult. Even I've said in the past that it can be tricky. I take that back. I'm here to tell you right now the brisket is not difficult to cook. As a matter of fact, brisket can be and should be really, really easy. I'm going to show you exactly how. The brisket I've got in this offset smoker behind me is over 19 and a half pounds. I put it in at 6 a.m. this morning. It's going to be ready to eat by 6 p.m. today. That's a total of 12 hours, including the resting time. So brisket doesn't need to be a 20, 24 hour cook. We can have this ready to go and eat on the same day. Now here's the basic plan. We're going to smoke it unwrapped for six hours flat. Don't really care about the temperature after six hours. I just want to smoke them for six hours. That's going to be enough time to give it the, the crust that we want, the bark that we want, and that, that flavor, all the flavor it's going to get. Then we're going to go ahead and wrap it in aluminum foil, and we're going to let it keep cooking until it hits a temperature of 205 degrees. 200 to 205 degrees is the range I'm looking for. And then once it hits that temperature, we're going to go ahead and just let it rest, and we're going to be ready to go by 6 p.m. Cooking temperatures during the unwrapped first six hours is going to be around the range of 225 degrees. It's going to bounce a little bit lower. It's going to bounce a little higher. That's totally okay. We're burning natural splits of oak wood, and that's what you get when you're running an offset smoker like this one. And then after we wrap it, that last portion, we're going to take crank temperature up a little bit. We're going to let it average around 250 to 275 in that range. And that's going to be great. That'll finish it off and get to that, that final internal temperature of 200 to 205 degrees. We're going to keep the prep of the brisket real simple. We're going to keep the running of the offset smoker real simple. I'm going to show you the tools that I use. I'm going to show you how to wrap it. I'm going to show you how to rest it. And I'm going to show you a little trick that you can use to cut back on the amount of time you're actually running your offset smoker. We're also going to talk a little bit about internal temperatures, uh, cha cooking chamber temperature. We're going to talk about the stall and talk about smoke quality and firebox management. When this is all done, if you like what you saw, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good stuff to help my channel. I really appreciate that. appreciate being here. Welcome to Tony's Home Barbecue. Let's get cooking. Good morning. It's early and here's a brisket we're cooking. This one is 19.66 pounds. That's a pretty good sized brisket. So I want to get this unwrapped and trimmed up and rubbed. I like the rub to be on about an hour before it is going in the smoker. So I need to get on that right away. Let's do this. Okay, before we apply the rub, we're gonna trim the fat. This is the top side, the fat, the side that does not have as much fat. And um, this is where I'm gonna probably keep the fat a little bit more trimmed down. So I don't want too much of that fat on there that's gonna melt off and uh, gonna get in the way of the rub sticking. So take a pretty decent off amount here but i'm going to be careful not to go and remove too much meat or any hopefully all right now i'm happy with the amount of fat that i've got removed from the top side of the brisket there's just a little bit of a chunk right here it's not too thick and the rest of it's pretty lean there so i'm gonna flip this over and get the side that has the most fat this side i'm not going to be too aggressive with Okay, brisket's all cleaned up, got some of the fat removed, not too much on this side. Now it's going, we're going to go put the rub on it, and um, I just like to use, this is salt, pepper, and garlic, by the way. It's about equal parts of each, salt, pepper, garlic, and I just like to go ahead and just dump it on here like this, and then rub it in a little bit, press it to the meat. Use whatever rub you like. I like salt, pepper, garlic. Have some fun with it if you haven't done a lot of brisket. I highly recommend just salt and pepper and then start adding more flavors to it. The top side is where I really like to make sure to get as much of the rub on as possible. Get that sticking nicely. Now that I've got my rub on the brisket, I want to start thinking about how it's going to go in the offset smoker and start getting it ready with the temperature probe so I can monitor the temperature. So the thickest point the point of the brisket is going to go towards the fire. So I'm going to be positioning it this end towards the fire. Here's the temperature probe. I want this is in the thickest part of the meat. And uh, so I like to gauge it kind of like this, kind of visualize. I want the end of it to be about right here. So I'm just going to stick it in about right here and uh, aim for that spot and just go. There we go. Should be right about there. Looking good. Okay, make sure you plan your cook accordingly. I want my brisket to be in this offset smoker by 6 a.m., so I need to make sure to get this thing 
fired up and ready to go early enough to get it hot and ready for that brisket at six o'clock. I've got my wood burning over here on top of a small pile of lump coal. Uh, after that coal burns down, it's just gonna be nothing but splits of oak wood on top of that. So we're looking good there. I've got my standby pieces on the left away from the fire and uh, fire's burning well there. So got this closed up and we're gonna go ahead and get the cooking chamber closed up. We're gonna start bringing this up to temperature. Okay, it's 6 a.m. and I want this brisket ready to be eaten by 6 p.m., 12 hours from now. Got it set in the offset smoker. You can see where I've got it positioned. The point is almost right in the middle of the of this offset. I've got the temperature probe inserted back there, so it's down inside here, so it can measure the temperature of the thickest part of the brisket. The flat, thin part is way over here, far away from where the heat's coming from, so that's going to protect it from getting dried out. We're going to cook this smoked at around 225, plus or minus, say 25 degrees is fine, for six hours straight. I'm gonna close this lid right now, not gonna open it for six hours. I don't really care what the internal temperature of the brisket is when I pull it at six hours. I'm guessing it's gonna be around 155 degrees. We're gonna talk a little bit here in a bit about the stall, and then we're gonna go ahead and wrap it, and we're gonna keep cooking it until it hits an internal temperature of 205. That's where we are gonna care about the temperature. We want it to finish at around 200 to 205 degrees. And that, I'm guessing, is going to take about three to four hours. Then we're going to let it rest for two to three hours. We're going to be eating at 6 p.m. Okay, let's talk about the stall and why we're only cooking unwrapped for six hours. We're currently three hours in. It's nine o'clock. The internal temperature of this brisket is now at 101 degrees. We're moving right along perfectly. So what the stall is, is when the brisket is cooking at this nice low temperature, it's going to reach a point where moisture is basically starts evaporating out of the inside of the brisket and it literally starts cooling off the brisket. It's, com it's fighting the, the ability to, to raise temperature. It's doing just like you do when you go out for a, for a run or something. You start working up a sweat. You, you start sweating and you start cooling yourself down. So when that typically happens, it's going to be around 150 degrees plus or minus a few degrees. If you look at your temperature and keep track of it as you're cooking, you'll see that it'll just steadily rise until it gets to around 150 degrees and then it kind of levels out and it might stay at 100, 155, uh, 150, 155 degrees for, shoot, an hour, sometimes two or three hours. And you have to wait a really long time. And some people combat that by trying to increase the temperature in the cooking chamber to, to push their way through the stall. But so listen to what's happening. You're literally evaporating moisture out of the meat. The meat's drying out. And so the stall is just, moisture is coming out until it gets dry enough to where it says, I can't cool myself down anymore. Um, now the temperature is going to start going up again. So you're going to end up with a nice and dry brisket. Wow, that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Not only do you get a nice dry brisket, but you're also cooking it for 16, 17, 20 hours and waiting a long time for that really nice dry brisket. What about the smoke flavor? What about penetration? Okay, the truth is that that smoke flavor is only going to penetrate so deep. It's going to go into the upper layers of that brisket. It's not going to go all the way to the core. If you cook this thing until it's 300 degrees, it's not going to have a smoky flavor. Well, it might by then because it might be like burnt coal, but <laughs> Really, you, the smoke flavor that you really need and want is going to be that good flavor that's going to uh, absorb into that top layer of the meat, and that's all. And when you slice into it and eat those bites, you're mixing it all together, and it's where you're getting that really delicious flavor. It's going to be fantastic. Now, so that stall, when it hits that 150 to 155 degree area, when that happens, happens to be around the six hour mark in, uh, typically. So that's why I'm just going to cook it to six hours. That's where it's going to really get the most smoke flavor it's going to get anyways. Then we're going to go ahead and wrap it in aluminum foil. And why we're doing this is because when you wrap it like that and seal it in this aluminum foil container, um, it's going to lock that moisture in. That moisture that's been trying to evaporate and escape has got nowhere to go anymore. It's stuck in there. So now it's forcing the temperature to start rising again. And you'll watch your graph and you'll see that it'll level out until you wrap it and then it'll start increasing again. That's fantastic. It's going to take you right up to 205 degrees. It's going to trap all that moisture inside there. And then you can stop cooking it when you get up to around 200, 200, uh, 200 to 205 degrees. Then just let it rest. Let those, those juices inside there just kind of reabsorb all over throughout the inside of your brisket. And 
when you are done resting and you go to carve it, it's going to be a nice, juicy, tender, delicious bite all the way through on every piece of this brisket. And it's going to be fantastic. So that's it. That's why we only cook six hours and it hits that stall and then we wrap it. Pretty simple, right? All right, when this brisket hits six hours, it's time to wrap it in aluminum foil. We want to wrap it securely so it's not leaking any liquid, not losing any steam. We want to do it quickly too so it's not losing a bunch of temperature in the process. How's your wrapping game? You feeling strong? If not, let me show you an easy way to practice so you don't fumble your brisket. All right, check it out. A 10 pound bag of potatoes is about the same size roughly as the brisket you're cooking. So get this out of the way. What you're going to want to do is you want to pull off enough aluminum foil that's about two and a half times the length of your brisket. All right, put your brisket, your bag of potatoes, right in the middle of that aluminum foil. And then, here's how we're going to wrap it. You're going to take both long ends, and you're going to meet in the middle. And you're just going to kind of roll them together like this. Now, what about that, that cord to the temperature probe? Okay, so you got this cord and this temperature probe. Depending on how you installed it, you might be able to leave it in and just have the cord sticking out over here. And then you just go ahead and grab these two ends together and fold those in. Also, just kind of roll them together and let that cord stick out over here and seal it up as tightly, crimp it around there as much as possible and you're good to go. If not, if you need to remove it, that's fine. Just take it out, kind of mark where you had it inserted. And then once you get it all wrapped up, then poke it right back in there and you're good to go that way too. The other side, just roll it up as well. And now, once these are all crimped, you've got a bag that is not going to let any leak, liquid leak out the bottom because everything is going up, everything is rolled up, and the liquid is going to collect in the bottom. It's also not super tight, so it's not really pressing down on the meat or anything like that, and you are good to go. There you go. That's how you wrap your brisket. If you've got some uh, weak aluminum foil, maybe do a double layer, but if you use some heavy-duty aluminum foil like this Reynolds Wrap, Pit Master's Choice is good stuff. I like it then uh, that'll work really well for you. You only need one sheet. There it is. All right, we're going to be wrapping in about 10 minutes, so let's talk about tools really quick. These gloves are waterproof, rubber, insulated gloves. These are a super handy way to grab that hot brisket and get it onto the aluminum foil and wrap without uh, burning your hands. Uh, it makes it really easy to handle. So uh, I'd highly suggest checking these out, getting a pair of these. Check the description of my video. I usually will post links of things like this so you can find them easily. Um, also, the temperature gauge the, uh, that I'm using, this is the Thermopro TP25. This really has been my favorite, very solid uh, way of monitoring ambient temperature and the internal temperature of the meat. This is a um, very inexpensive unit. Uh, again, I'll check, check the uh, description. There'll be a link to where you can find them on there. Um, and uh, I'm, I have an affiliate account with Thermal Pro too, so if you end up buying one, do it through my link. And it helps me out a little bit. It doesn't cost you any extra. But the reason I'm not recommending this one is because I've used this one a lot, and it is my favorite. It gives the most accurate readings, and you can have up to four probes. Right now, I'm only running two and uh, it's really easy to use. It links uh, through Bluetooth to your cell phone, or I like to link it to my tablet, and so that way I can take this with me wherever I go. It's got a good range. I can take it all over my house, and I'm good to go with that. Um, another one that I've used a lot is the Temp Spike Plus. This is a new one that uh, I got from Thermopro. Um, this is nice because it's 100% completely wireless, which is cool. Um, same thing, it'll link to your phone, or your tablet, whatever. Um, the only downside I have to this one, why I'm not using it today, is because um, the wired version does a better job of providing an accurate ambient temperature um, reading. These ones that are connected, uh, that are also plugged into the meat, um, they seem to be skewed a little bit. They work well enough, but I prefer a more accurate reading. But just not having any wires connected whatsoever is super cool. Also, when I'm using this one, I kind of miss having a gauge like this so I can just, you know, see the reading out here and know what it is if I'm out here or, you know, have my cell phone or tablet in the house and see that over there. Now, that brings me on to another topic, something I'm really excited to share with you too, is the temperature of the brisket. We are now at 1150, and check this out. What did I tell you? We're at 150 degrees, 151 degrees internal temperature. Didn't I tell you that it was gonna end up being around 150 to 155 degrees at six hours? Well, there we are. 
Now let me show you, show you something else that's really cool. First, let's look at the ambient temperature, all right? Just so you know. Ambient temperature has been just steadily going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Every time I add a new piece of wood, it spikes up and then it comes right back down. And then it, uh, I open the lid, it drops a little extra. And then, you know, I put the new piece of wood, it goes up, comes down. So that's normal. Now, let's look at the brisket temperature. So brisket, what I tell you? See, notice the curve? This is when we first started right here. And you see just steadily, temperature steadily, 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 steadily rising up. And now it's starting to level off. It's almost flat. If we let this keep going, unwrapped, it's going to be flat. Straight flat for a long time before it starts rising up again. So what you're going to see now is I'm going to wrap the brisket. And you're going to see pretty soon that this temperature is going to stop leveling out and starts going upward again until it reaches that target temperature. Uh, another thing is this calculates how long it's, your cook time is going to take. So earlier, this said that estimated time left is four hours. Now it says 12 hours. That's because it's based on the amount that the temperature is raising every, I don't know how often it measures it every few seconds, every minute or whatever. But because it's leveling out, now it's increased the cooking time that's left to almost 13 hours. And see, it's going back and forth. Now it says six hours. It's because it's having trouble calculating it, figuring it out, what's happening here. It's just averaging it out. So we need to get that back down. We're going to wrap it. We're going to trap that moisture inside, keep this thing from sweating and cooling itself. And we're going to get this thing finished. And we're going to eat this today. Let's do it. All right, it's noon. This brisket has been cooking for tw uh, six hours. Check out that smoke coming off the offset. It's looking good, nice and clean. This is the first time I'm going to lay eyes on it. You're going to be right here with me. Let's have a look. Yes, I'd say that looks fantastic. Exactly what I was hoping for. Beautiful. Let's get this wrapped. I'm going to close this back up. I'm going to prep that aluminum foil and grab this, get it wrapped up. All right, here we go. Unplug the black cable and glove on. These gloves are nice because I actually just wash them in the sink like I'm washing my hands. Put them on and go to work. Uh, here comes the brisket. Watch the cord. There we go. Oh, yeah. There it is. Beautiful. All right, this thing I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. We'll plug that in later. Oh, oh, too short. Funny thing is, I knew it was too short when I cut it too, and I went with it anyways. <laughs> oh well, hey, that's what happens. So I just took it off and cut a new piece. All right, be careful not to tear the aluminum foil. There we go. Put these sides together, roll up. Okay, a nice seal. Good. All right, bring these sides together, back up Packer. I know you want some of that, but you're not getting any. In case you're wondering, Packer is a greater Swiss mountain dog. He is just over two years old. And he's pretty much the coolest dog ever. All right, there we go. Wrapped up. We're good. Now, probe. Not too hot. Nope, good. Let's go ahead and tick, stick this back in. Pick a spot right there. And boom, in. Good. Let's get this back in the smoker. All right, before I close the lid, you can see real quick, it's back in the smoker. I've got the wire hooked back up again. You can see I hit about the same spot because the temperature is reading about 152 internal. Let's close this lid. And we're going to now increase the temperature of the, the ambient cooking temperature up to an average 250, 275. Just a little bit hotter than we were running before. Now, I remember I told you there was going to share with you a little tip about how to now be done with running your offset smoker. So you have to manage this fire anymore. Very simple. This thing is completely wrapped in aluminum foil. It is not going to absorb any more smoke. There is absolutely no benefit to cooking this thing any longer inside the offset smoker. If you want to save yourself some trouble and you're tired of running this thing for six hours, which is not a very long time, 
take that thing, put it in your oven, set your oven to say 265, 275, and leave it in there until it hits that temperature of 200 and 205 degrees. It's going to take about three hours, um, plus or minus a little bit. You'll see three to four hours, I'd say, and um, they'll be good to go. That's it. Just finish cooking in the oven. When it's done, you take it out and you unwrap it and do everything just like you normally would as if you were cooking it in your offset smoker. So if you want to save yourself some trouble, put it in the oven. There ain't no shame in that game, all right? Because you're not getting any smoke benefit. There it is. That's how you can save somebody. You can be done now and then just set the, the, the notification on your thermometer to let you know when it hit 200 degrees or whatever you want to hit it to, 203 is like I have mine set to, and then take it out and let it rest. That's it. You're done. This, this, this cook is done. You'll be slicing pretty soon next time you see us. I got one more real quick bonus tip for you. Let's say you really want to finish this brisket in your offset smoker, but you would like it to be a little bit easier and not have to work so hard managing that little fire of wood burning. Check this out. Go ahead and dump a big pile of charcoal on top of your existing fire, close that lid, and then just as that charcoal takes off, go ahead and start choking down the air intake and the air and the exhaust so that you can maintain that temperature that you want around 250 to, two, to 275 and you can just leave it like that and it'll go for the rest of the time. That right there is probably enough charcoal, enough fuel to finish this cook until it hits the 205 mark. I doubt I'm going to have to add anything else. It's also a great way to test out new products or maybe get rid of an old bag of charcoal or something you don't like. Or since it's wrapped, that smoke quality no longer matters. It can be dirty white smoke and it's okay because none of that's going to penetrate through that aluminum foil and affect the flavor of your brisket. It's 320. Guess what? This brisket is done. Done, done, done. Check it out. We got an internal temperature of 204 degrees. What did I say? I said we're going to hit temp in about three to four hours. Well, it's been three hours and 20 minutes. How about that, huh? Okay, let me show you temperature for the, uh, the ambient temperature side of the cooking chamber. Since I uh, wrapped it and put it in there and then I switched to charcoal, you can see the temperature a lot more consistent there, not quite as jumpy went between 245 degrees and 275 degrees and stayed right in the middle there. So that was great. And then the temperature of the brisket. Now, remember I said that that chart was going to go, it was rising quickly and then it leveled out a little bit. And then after I wrap it, it would start rising quickly again. Well, that's exactly what happened. You see that you kind of got that leveled off area there and then zoop, right back up to the target temperature of 203 degrees, currently at 204. Let's open this up. We're done. There it is. So not much to see yet. Pretty soon though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, we're gonna move that over into this cooler right here. I just threw a towel down in there and I'm gonna set that brisket down inside. I'm gonna close that lid. We're gonna let it rest for two to three hours. Uh, it's gonna end up being about two and a half hours because we are gonna open this up and start slicing it at 6 p.m. And then I'm gonna have some dinner. Yeah, you may have heard the brisket is done when you can easily stick a temperature probe into it and it slides right out nice and easy. Yeah, that's true. Um, another thing is if, if it's jiggly and soft, yep, that's true too. You can definitely rely on that temperature though. And yeah, it is, it is soft and jiggly. I, I, I'm not careful here. <laughs> It'll just fall apart. So into the cooler we go. In case you're wondering why we keep it in the cooler, it's just so it's a nice draft, non-drafty spot that'll let the temperature come down slowly. You don't want to leave it out somewhere where it's really drafty and it'll cool off too fast. That doesn't work as well. So put it in, you, know, you can use maybe your oven if it's insulated well enough. Just even in a you know calm corner of the kitchen and cover it with a bunch of towels or something is fine too. So uh, just to let it cool down slowly, that's all. All right, it's just a little after six o'clock. It's actually 6.11 and uh, it's time to carve this brisk. I thought I'd share this with you real quick. Look at the temperature. We're at uh, 179 degrees now see the curve it kind of actually went up a little bit above the 205 and it's been slowly working its way down so it's been holding temperature and uh, coming down slowly so let's pull this thing out of here we can turn this off now done with that all right so this thing is still really hot so i'm gonna go ahead and keep using these uh barbecue gloves this uh silicone insulated barbecue gloves and let's get this bad boy oh man it's soft oh okay now you're gonna want to use uh, like a half sheet or something or a big baking, you know, tray, something to collect the juice from this aluminum because when you open it up, it's going to get a little bit messy. Okay, here we go.
All right, there's that brisket. Look at that jiggle. All right, let me let you get a close-up of this because I am not going to pick this up and try to move it over close to the camera, but look at this. Look at that. Look how soft that is. That is a nice jiggly brisket right there. So I'm going to get it out of this and lay it on the cutting board. Oh my gosh. Okay, it is time. <laughs> We're going to slice up this brisket. And I'm going to let you see the inside. We see how tender this is. Now, um, there is a way you're supposed to slice a brisket. Let me tell you real quick, okay? Uh, on the flat, the grain runs this way, kind of, kind of like this way. On the point, the grain runs more this way. So you're supposed to slice the point this way. You're supposed to slice the flat this way, okay? Just FYI. So you're going to want a nice big knife, something nice and sharp. A good chef's knife will do. Uh, proper slicer works real nice too or good old serrated bread knife works really great for brisket but brisket this tender just a nice sharp blade is excellent for it and um, so you can go through you know separating the, the point in the flat look just kind of go somewhere about in the middle here and just go for it there you go and there is the inside of this brisket now let me carefully Get this up to you so we can get you a closer look. Huh? Hey, what do you think about that? That looks, oh gosh, that looks good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and slice down the middle here like this. Woohoo. Look at that. Okay. Like I was saying, it doesn't really matter which way you slice this because a brisket like this is going to be so tender no matter how you slice it. You know, it, it's all good. So once we get through the bark there, we'll go right through this flat. Uh-huh. Okay, now, um, this is freaking cool. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. It, it's practically falling apart. That is just beautiful. Look at that. I want to be dripping juice all over the place. Now this is a brisket that's going to just be tender and juicy I, all the way through. Look at that. Ugh. I'm just trying to be careful not to tear it apart. I want some nice smooth slices. There we go. Did you look, look at that. Look at that. Okay, that is gorgeous. Now, um, look how easy this just falls apart. Okay, that is one tender, beautiful brisket. I gotta get a bite. Let's talk about tenderness and flavor. Here we go. Mm. Mmm. 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 That is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Look how easy this comes apart. Now, I want to talk about smoke flavor. Does it have that smoky flavor you want in a, in a brisket? I mean, look at the smoke ring. You see that? The beautiful smoke ring there. This is full of flavor. Look how easy it comes apart. Tender. It's just actually juicy in every bite. Mm hmm It's definitely got that delicious smoke flavor you're looking for in a brisket. Mmm. It does not have any of that bitter flavor that you get when you're running dirty smoke. It's just 
gosh, it tastes good. This salt, pepper, garlic, and uh, when you weren't looking, I kind of ran low on the salt, salt, pepper, and garlic, so I threw on a little pappies. That's, that's one of the uh, one of the old faithfuls. Pappies, all-purpose seasoning, whatever. Really great on brisket. Mmm. Tell you what, this is perfect. All right. So, mmm. Get a slice here. I hope that this has been uh, educational, hopefully a little fun, and, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any comments, questions, please put them in the, uh, in the comment section. I'll be, uh, do my best to get back to you. And um, uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. That helps out the channel a lot. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for being here. This has been Tony Tone Barbecue. Smoke on, my friends.